morning. Welcome back across the border to County Donegal. And um, we're in an area called Melmore Head. Now, immediately those of you who are anyway familiar with this area are probably thinking, I know where he's heading. There's a quite a famous beach that has become very famous with photographers over the last probably three or four years called the Murder Hole. Um, it's over my headland that I'm walking towards to the left, but not heading there this morning. And while I probably will head there, it's not set in stone. It's middle of the summer and that means very busy. Um, and that means lots of footprints, lots of kind of chaos down there. So we might head down there, we might not. I'll be head down for a dander at the very least. Weather forecast was given as a small percentage of rain and very overcast, especially to the east. But what am I gonna do, just lie in bed and pretend that I've gone out with a, with a camera? Of course not. I'm gonna head down to a little beach been here a number of times and again I'm just gonna get in behind this tree in case there's a little bit of wind noise there um, this was actually one of the areas that um, I ran I think in last week's video or a couple of weeks video when I was in Donegal last time I spoke about running residential workshops and while they were mostly based upon the around the Inishowen Peninsula um, I did do an extended one uh, where we visited uh, Farad Lighthouse um, I think I've got a vlog from there at some point. Um, and also here, Melmore Head. Um, and it's a phenomenal coastline. Not just the murder hole. Don't get me wrong, it's a very nice beach. It can be quite a treacherous beach as well, with a lot of sleep, sleeping, sweeping waves coming up through. But there's a little beach down here. Now, again, not only not ideal conditions overhead, but unfortunately, we're really close to high tide as well. Um, which is probably gonna scupper things a little bit, but we'll take it down. down. Sure, why not, eh? So as, as you can see there, quite a high tide, which is which is disappointing. I knew it was going to be high tide because of course this is where you can get some lovely sweeps around those um, stones, but also some beautiful sand patterns as well. In fact, one of the beaches I am going to head to on this vlog, hopefully, or maybe if I split up as into two vlogs, um, is somewhere where I have shot some of my favorite beach patterns ever. You can only do what you can do, says a wise man once or something. Got myself set up. As you can see, the light levels have risen. Um, so I brought myself down to, as I say, to some of the rocks down here on the, on the beach are just absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of weather moving across on the horizon um, which can sometimes help even in sort of not too great light conditions but that weather now really seems they have closed in and we just have sort of dull drab so i'm kind of working on a potential composition down here given the fact that there's not a huge amount going on on the horizon i'm even tempted to completely remove it all altogether certainly not given it a huge amount of time in the frame, time in the frame, sort of space in, in the frame. Um, but I say it's the it's the coloured rocks down here, the textures on them and of course how those waves are moving through. Now I think I spoke about this in a vlog a number of weeks ago from White Rocks. Um, we have what I like to call sort of muddy water going on. There's certainly in quite a number of those waves coming in, there's not really a huge amount of energy. So if I was to make an image um, of, of those uh, waves, it, it kind of doesn't really give you anything. So I'm waiting for 
the more sort of forceful wave to come in, which actually gives a little bit of sort of streaks across the sand. Um, the other thing that now, probably not having to do that now because the light levels have, have raised up enough. Um, when I first came down here and when I was shooting, sort of naturally I was getting four or five seconds of exposure time, way too long. Um, and that again was meaning that even those forceful waves coming in, it was just kind of muddying out things. So I've actually raised my ISO, so I can probably put it back down again now because those ambient light levels have actually um, risen. Really want one and a half, two seconds here just to capture that energy and some of those streaks uh, coming through. Um, polarizer on at the moment, taking off some of the glare off that, off that sand. Um, and that's really about it on the X-T2 18 to 135, probably at about 23 mil. It's another one of those mornings that if there had been a gap on the horizon to the east, this could have been something quite nice because those clouds above me, you can just about probably see those there yet. Rather nice indeed. Okay, so I've actually brought myself up onto the um, rocks above the, the tide now, not least because I'm um, not wearing Wellingtons. Um, I have got them with me, but just didn't put them on this morning, so I was being driven back and driven back more from the, um, from the tide. So I've actually brought myself up. Now, again, the clouds are... There you go. The clouds are looking rather nice, and so I'm keeping an eye on that because Again, we might, we might just get a little bit of gap and um, some lovely colour above. Um, but what I'm really doing now is focusing in on a couple of little, or a little intimate scene. Rocks down here, I love just how the, the waves were flowing over them, just creating almost a little sort of like mini waterfall effect. And again, the light, uh, with a little bit of polarisation on those rocks. The, the colour of those rocks is just, re just really, really nice. Yeah, just a little intimate scene. I preferred the light on the on the scene before sunrise. Now because we have very little cloudage above us, um, it's not creating a huge amount of reflection into these areas and so the whole scene the whole scene isn't isn't that well lit and so you get sort of darker areas and really bright areas and so I've kind of pulled myself away from shooting the bigger scene and now looking to do something with a little bit more of the intimate scene. Now, I kind of may need to blend a couple of images. I want to use the polarizer on those rocks on the right hand side of the frame because I, wanna, I don't want the reflections on there. I want to bring through some of that um, lovely natural color in the rocks. However, that does lose a little bit of the sort of reflective light uh, off the water as it's coming as, as it's coming over that little sort of mini mini drop and so I might unpolarize or sort of slightly less polarize for the water just because I want a little bit of the, of the reflective light on on the water and then full polarization on the rocks to bring through the richness of the color um, and again I guess that's one of the real benefits of um, digital just shoot a number of scenes and see what works best it's better to do that I find then get home and go, if only. I'm still up here on the rocks and I've actually come across a, a lovely little scene. Well, I like it anyway. See, so the light levels continue to rise and, and so there's a little bit of lichen on the um, one of the rocks here, and I think just as that light, as those light levels, and especially as we get a little bit more cloud cover overhead, and we get a little bit more reflective light, it really just brings out the lovely sort of yellow tones of that lichen. And then looking to kind of 
work a, a shutter speed that again doesn't give me sort of huge you know five six seconds just a couple of seconds so I'm kind of playing around with with the ISO to make sure that um, the uh, I'm, I'm getting that sort of one and a half two seconds shutter speed I'm out at about hang on 55 mil depth of field could be a slight issue because everything's quite close in so I might uh, at the moment I'm kind of focusing in sort of on this foreground rock with the lichen and I'll probably uh, do a second exposure on those far rocks because I really want those to be nice and sharp as well I want the rocks to really shine through their 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 texture and there's lovely sort of lines and cracks and gnarly bits in those rocks so yeah lovely now there is quite a few gaps appearing in the clouds there's some incredible clouds out to the west that way is west Nigel no no northeast actually you're not gonna be able to see this I'm sure but rather nice but I'm still focusing on that intimate scene and I think mainly again there's a very quite an unbalanced scene in terms of light um, there is some lovely sort of clouds as I said but the foreground here mostly is in shadow and, and I think you'd end up going home and either doing something completely wrong with the image trying to sort of lighten those shadows and add some color into it or you would just bin it so getting much more joy out of those little intimate scenes but just keeping an eye just in case we get a breakthrough with 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 the light My goodness me, so it's the 2nd of August or something, and I am freezing. Goodness me, shitting on the Atlantic coast, fun times. Anyway, it's a good job this camera's got image stabilization because my hands are literally. I brought myself uh, away from that scene just a couple of meters, just when it was over there before. And again, it's all about the reflected light, and in fact, for a moment, direct light, and in fact, that sun's just starting to poke back out again, way high in the sky. Now, I think if we had just pure clear skies, this would be way, way, way too, too bright. But because we have a little bit of clouds in there, just being able to catch it just before the sun come, comes out. And again, it's all about lifting the colors and the textures in that lichen. And standing sort of above the tide line as well, I'm able to sort of see the sort of sweep of the, of the tide all the way around this, this place. It's a very popular hollow, uh, hollow lake spot. My, my mouth is actually frozen it's the 2nd of August so obviously I'm not looking to get any of that in um, but I just loved how some of the there's that sun coming back again I just loved how some of those sort of the lines that that that, that tide was making and of course the um, the lift of that color of the of the lichen on, on the rocks I'm um, just focusing on those rocks them, themselves this time um, obviously because we've got lots of movement in the waves um, don't really need to worry too much about kind of focus on on those so really just focusing down on that rock but and as I've said I think before a while back between 1st of April and 30th of September I wore shorts I do regret that decision sometimes right I'm gonna carry on I'd love a little bit more light that light just seems to have disappeared now I'd love a little bit more light and see whether we can get one more image just lifting that the, the lichen it's just beautiful these these rocks it's just yeah love it probably won't make for wonderful images but hey get you excited in the field and all that did i mention i'm cold two things one with that sun being up it is a little bit warmer at least but two now that that sun has has risen into quite a significant gap in the clouds i think we're probably going to have to call it call it quits for this morning but that was rather nice again 
I just love these little intimate scenes. Now don't get me wrong, if, if there had been sort of gaps in the clouds, I certainly would have been looking to shoot a, a, a wider scene. Um, there's lovely interest in the uh, far distance with those sort of hills and things. Um, but, you know, it's all about adjusting to what you've been given on the, on the day. So it's a rather nice morning. So we're actually down here again in the van and we've actually parked up. We pretty much, I mean, last year in Scotland, six months, we wild camped, I think, 95% of the time. But we decided to treat ourselves. And we've actually got a campsite for three days in this area for the next couple of days. So hopefully, unlike the last Donegal video where it, we got rained out for our proposed second video, I will be recording at least one more video from, from this area. Rather enjoyed that. Love the lichen on the rocks. And I think it's time for coffee. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.